One complaint that has come up over and over, uh, and you'll, you might have noticed this if you spend time on any of the great uh, Facebook Helix groups, which is the only reason I use Facebook anymore. Uh, we have a great subreddit on Reddit, and then there's also some, some forums on like the gear page and other stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, one of the common complaints that I see is that people can't seem to make the synth blocks work too well. Uh, they definitely are really capable. You just need to feed it a certain type of signal. Uh, and so in this video, I wanna share with you how to set up synth blocks, what type of signal you need to create to send into the front to make it respond the way that you're probably thinking they should respond. Later on in the video, I wanna share a couple cool synth presets that I built, and I'm gonna share all the settings on the screen so you can recreate them at home if you want. I have a bunch of synth presets and other kind of like special effects, I call them, um, in, in a bundle I'll mention later. Special effects, meaning that it's not actually built into the Helix as a block, but through combinations of parallel paths, maybe some split crossovers, different EQs, uh, and other effects put together, we can actually get the Helix to do some really interesting things uh, that it's not officially supposed to be able to do. For instance, using the monophonic blocks and actually polyphonically. I'll get to that in a later video. If you're new to this channel, I have 60 or so Helix tutorials. There's a whole playlist. I'll leave a link in the description. Feel free to flip through that, find what you need. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, if you enjoy this kind of content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Uh, but let's get to HX Edit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got my HX Stomp XL here. You can see I'm using a bunch of the foot switches and we'll get into that in a second for this preset. I just like to use foot switch mode because it gives you, especially on the smaller units, more control over the different combinations of sound that you can get versus uh, using snapshots where on the regular Stomp we're limited to three and on the XL we're limited to just four. Um, so that's just how these presets are built. Of course, you can use snapshots if you want. This next bit applies directly to guitars, but also it could apply to any other instrument. Basically, you just want to send the brightest sound that you're capable of, of making on the instrument to the HX Stomp. It just helps it track a lot better. Uh, for me, for a guitarist, that means keeping your tone knob at full as if it were bypassed, so we're not lo losing any of the high end. Uh, keep that completely clockwise, and then use the bridge pickup. Now, the, the key here is that we're just going to be crushing the heck out of a signal, making it look like a square wave like we have. Uh, there's no front to the note. It's just one big, long, sustaining block, and we're also sending a very hot signal. So if you're going to create this preset, make sure you're attenuating it down the line. Uh, and this is, I've done this with a second compressor uh, where I've, yeah, clamped down on the threshold a lot to bring it back to a reasonable volume. Uh, along with all this, you need a gate, and here's the settings for the gate that works for my guitar. This is a PAF humbucker instrument, so uh, humbuckers are hotter than single coils. If you have single coils, you might want to drop this down a little bit further. PAFs in the humbucker world are kind of on the lower output side, so this is the setting that works for me. If you have active pickups, this is going to be much higher, or you might actually consider using the pad. So once we do that, we're sending it to a compressor where we're just smashing the heck out of it. We want to see a signal that basically looks like there's no attack, no front to the note, uh, and we just have one long sustaining tone that doesn't really lose um, volume over time like a traditional plucked instrument would. We want it to sustain like a synthesizer when you press a button and it'll hold that note until someone unplugs your synthesizer. So to do this, I'm using the LA Studio Comp. You can use any of the other compressors, I'm sure, too. This one seems to work the best. Um, so I just maxed out the peak reduction. That means we're really clamping down on the, the attack of the note, right? And then I've boosted the gain to max volume, and then I've boosted the level to max volume, too. The synth blocks just love to see a really hot signal, uh, and they're kind of limiting how much is coming out. Uh, but you should also, if you're doing this, you should also have something to make sure that no super loud noises escape. Uh, and so here I've got a compressor, the Rochester Comp, acting as a limiter. So that's with the ratio all the way at maximum, where it's saying no matter what, nothing above this threshold is, is getting out. And then set the threshold to taste, make sure you're getting the right kind of sound that you want. Know that if you're going to set this up and edit this preset, between here and here, it is super loud in the Helix, so definitely be careful uh, that you don't delete the thing that's bringing it down to reasonable volume, especially if you have in-ears, it might hurt your ears or, or blow your speakers out. Uh, so that's basically the secret of getting the synth blocks to work. So on one hand, we have the synth lead block. I'm going to bring this down to one pass so we can isolate it. And that's most of what you're hearing. It kind of has that 
in my mind, like a Namco 80s, uh, I don't know, like a Pac-Man style arcade game or something. Uh, and this one, since I'm using 60% mix, you can actually hear a little bit of the dry sound coming through. You might also notice that I have a foot switch pulled up here. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, that's just kind of changing the sound of it so you can have a couple different tones within this preset. Let's bypass that and isolate the other source, which is a harmonizer, basically. Uh, and we've got octave up, perfect octave up, and then a perfect fifth up. So I'm exiting the preset, heading back to it, so it recalls the save state I had it at before. It tracks really well, truthfully. Of course you can play guitaristically if you want, um, but chances are you'll probably want to make it sound a little bit more authentic by not playing those classic guitar licks and playing something that might be more practical to a synth. Um, the thing you got to keep in mind is that it's monophonic and it's very sensitive now that we've crushed the signal. So with your right hand, you just got to be very precise with how you're muting stuff. Like if I had played this note and I was still letting it ring out or I went to, and I hit an open string, it's not going to track well. So yes, you just have to be really careful uh, making sure there's only one note coming out your guitar at any given moment. So let's get into the foot switches for this preset. We have... I called it resonance, and this is just changing a bunch of parameters within these two blocks to give you a different sort of sound. Um, in my mind, I'm kind of thinking like a, an 8-bit Game Boy Color type sound, like, I don't know if anyone grew up with the Game Boy Color. This is what a lot of the music from those games sounded like. It was very simple. So here's the original, like, kind of smoother sounding uh, tone. And then I'll hit foot switch one. A little bit more gritty uh, and that's just changing parameters here in the harmony block up top uh, from wave five the minimum setting is as, as if the switch were bypassed and then it changes to wave eight when you press the switch and then for the lead block it's moving between three and six that parameter so let's get into the modulation i'm just using a retro reel with a simple bypass function on foot switch four uh, and this is giving us a kind of like tape saturated tone. There's a little bit of saturation, so it distorts just a little bit. The wow and flutter is plenty there. So you're hearing some, some warble and vibrato effects. That was foot switch four on foot switch five. I just have a, a parameter toggle for the chorus block that was up front. It's switching from chorus mode to vibrato mode. Uh, and I'm also raising the mix to maximum, so it's being a true vibrato effect now. You can hear the modulation. Let's combine that with the, uh, the foot switch 4, which I called lo-fi. So let's get into the wet effects. I have the heliosphere delay just set up with a simple bypass on foot switch two, and there's the settings on the screen for you. The heliosphere is a newer model that they had added, uh, and this actually has a reverb within the uh, within the delay. So I believe the reverb is just affecting the repeated sounds and not actually the the dry signal. That is one of the coolest synth effect delays, uh, synth style delays maybe that you can have. Uh, to finish up here and do the reverb, this is using the dynamic plate block, which is actually always on, and I'm using foot switch three to toggle some parameters. So with the foot switch effectively bypassed here, uh, with it not turned on at all, we have uh, the minimum settings. So the damping is actually higher. It comes down when I turn it on to create a, a slightly darker reverb sound. Um, there's the settings, by the way. And then we have decay, which goes up, mix goes up, and pre-delay goes up when I hit that button. Uh, let's actually watch it. So 
So with the effect turned off, or rather the, the foot switch turned off, we just have a kind of more general reverb to give this effect, this preset, some space. And as we turn on foot switch three, you can hear the reverb is much more apparent and noticeable. So last thing here, let's just try the preset with all the effects engaged. We have the vibrato at the front of the chain. Uh, we have the synth blocks and we have the heliosphere delay, the dynamic plate reverb, and finally the tape modulation, which is after the wet effects. And I think it really gives it that kind of 80s sound. So there it is, yeah. So there it is, how to actually use the synth presets in the Helix. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Keep in touch. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share it with a friend that might find it useful. It helps me out, helps the Helix community, I think. And as I mentioned, I have a massive library of 100 plus presets that I've been creating over my last three or four years with the Helix. There's a link in the description if you wanna read more about that. Uh, there's also like five impulse response bundles in there, including one I did recently of my Mesa Boogie with a, a Celestian Vintage 30 speaker that I've been really digging and uh, I've got a lot of really good feedback on. So anyway, take care. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.